Good day. In this video, we're going to look at the rules that applies to the Cartesian plane. Firstly, we have an x-axis and a y-axis. This whole area is called the Cartesian plane. We write an x over here to indicate that this is the x-axis and put a y on the left at the top here to say this is the y-axis. This is where the x-axis is positive, the x-axis is negative, the y-axis is positive and the y-axis is negative. The next thing we're going to look at is the quadrants. If you look at this picture, you will see that it's divided into four quarters. So here is a quarter, here, here, and here. So this will be my first quadrant. That will be my second quadrant. That will be my third quadrant. This will be my fourth quadrant. So we start in this quadrant. Do not start at the wrong place. And we go anti-clockwise this way, this way, and that way. Usually the kids say, we're not going clockwise, sir, so that means we are going against the clock. We start at 1, 2nd quadrant, 3rd quadrant, 4th quadrant. The place where the y-axis and the x-axis meets is called the origin. So this is called the origin. We also put arrows at the end of both sides of your x-axis and at the top and the bottom of your y-axis. That means the Cartesian, the Cartesian plane goes in this direction forever, this direction forever, up forever and down forever. A very important fact that you need to know on a Cartesian plane is where x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. If you look at these three dots that are indicated over here, you will see that all their x values is equal to 2. So a lot of kids think that on the x-axis, this is where x is 2. It's not. x is 2 everywhere over here. So x equals to 2 will be everywhere on this red line. The next one we want to know is where x is equal to minus 4. Here is the x-axis, here is minus 4, so that means x equals to minus 4 is over there, everywhere on that red line. The next one we want is x equals to 1. On the x-axis, x is equal to 1 here, and that means my red stripe will move there, everywhere on this line, x equals to 1. The last one for x we want is x equals to 0. That means that is on the y-axis, that is where x is equal to 0, everywhere on this line. Now we want to know where y is equal to 2. We go on the y-axis, find out where the 2 is, and that means y is equal to 2 will be everywhere on that blue line. Everywhere there, y is equal to 2. The next one is y equals to minus 3. That means we will have the line over there. All the values on this line is where y is equal to minus 3. The last one is y equals to 0. That is, in other words, everywhere on the x-axis. Everywhere here, y is equal to 0. The next thing we're going to look at is at coordinates. Here I put a black dot, a purple dot, and a red dot. Each one has a coordinate. Now you need to understand that any coordinate is written in a bracket with a point comma in between. The first number is your x value, the second value is your y value. Same over here, the first value is your x value, the second value is your y value. For this dot over here, the x value is minus 3 and the y value is minus 2. So on this coordinate, the x value is minus 4 and the y value is 1. And where those two lines meet, I find my coordinate. For this purple coordinate over here, my x value is... 2, yes, and my y value is 2, and that's where the coordinate comes from. For this dot over here, my x value is minus 3, and my y value is minus 2, and that's why the coordinate is written like that. Make sure you know how to read a coordinate. The last one then, this is called your origin over here at the center, and the coordinate of the origin is x is naught and y is naught. The next thing we need to know about a Cartesian plane is that we can have different intervals on different axes. But on one of the axes, you need to have the same intervals. If you work in threes here, that's three, six, nine. Let's go minus three, minus six, minus nine. As long as everything is the same on this axis. This one can be different from the other one. One, two, three, as long as it stays one, two, three, all the way down. So we can have one interval here and a different interval over there. Here is a second one that I drew. I took intervals of 10 on the x-axis, 
and hundreds on the y-axis. As long as this is 10, 20, 30, it must start at naught, and then minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, and we used intervals of 100 on the y-axis. Naught, 100, 200, 300, naught, minus 100, minus 200, minus 300. The next one, on the x-axis, I took intervals of 1, so it's naught, 1, 2, 3, 4, and minus 1, 2, minus 2, minus 3, and then up and yeah, I went with 5, 10, 15, minus 5, minus 10, minus 15. So we can use different scales, but the same scale on one axis. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked the video and subscribe to the channel. If there's anything in school maths that you're not sure about, you can send us a WhatsApp photo to this number with your problem. Then we will analyze it and send you a memo or make a small video and place it for free on this channel. Enjoy maths.